If there's anything I've learned over the past year or so about music production, it's that quantity drives quality. The more music you can get in here and make, the better you can make it and you'll realize without even thinking about it that your music is just getting better as you practice. Well, with the release of iPadOS 15, a lot of productivity features came that I think are gonna help you make music more efficiently. What is up creatives? I'm Jarrell, your music technologist, here to help you master the tech you need to make music freely. And if you haven't done so yet, I would encourage you after you check out this video, definitely check out my playlist of my lunch break sessions, which is me in a one minute clip form making music and you'll see exactly how my music production goes in a compressed format. But the reason that's relevant is because lunch break sessions are exactly what they sound like. I come in here on my lunch break and I make music and the way I'm able to do that in a compressed amount of time is to have everything set up in a way that makes my music production easy to do. So without further ado, we're gonna dive in. I'm gonna show you some of the things that I've done with my iPad with these iPad OS 15 features to make that happen. So starting with my home screen setup, this is my current home screen setup and it is very functional and I think it's, you know, aesthetic, whatever, but I have all of my essential apps right here in this group of eight. The ones that I use a lot aren't really in folders. So that's BeatMaker 3. I got Spotify just for listening and the app store for finding new apps, which I do pretty often. Um, I have my other DAWs in this folder right here. I've got music creation, basically things that aren't DAWs or other kinds of sound engines. They're just music creation apps. I have those in there. Effects plugins over here. Got a couple pages of those. Uh, software instruments right here. And then I got MIDI tools, which is basically just things that help me to do MIDI on here. Different apps. I'll probably cover a couple of these. Uh, in the future. But anyway, that is the home screen setup. And I have up here, I have uh, just my logo here in a giant widget. And then I have a clock widget with the date. And then I have my battery percentages here. And then I have a label called music because this is not my only home screen that I have set up. Over here is my basic home screen with all of the my, my regular apps. Then I got music. This is my business page. And this is the leisure page. So I have different pages. Oh yeah, that takes you to the app library. I have different pages for different things that I do. And this is the music one. Now, if you wanna see exactly how I made this layout, stay tuned, cause I'm gonna talk about that towards the end or you can hit the chapter mark and jump to it if that's all you're interested in. One of the dope things I like about this setup is this whole system actually rotates perfectly. If you've ever tried to set up your home screen on iPad OS 15 on your iPad, the widgets are kind of wonky where they don't line up where you think they should. So the geometry of this page is set up so that you can easily take what you have here and rotate it. And it kind of maintains the same setup in a way. You still have your label at the bottom left and then you have your eight apps. This time they're just in a portrait fashion instead of being landscape. And then these widgets stack and you've got your banner across the top. I really like this because everything else I've ever done, everything just ends up everywhere. And it's, it, it's nice to have something streamlined between portrait and landscape. So that is the reason I went with this layout. Now, there's much more function to it than just having a home screen layout. This is where we're gonna get into some of the productivity stuff real quick. So you might know that focus modes were added to iPad OS. If you go in here, you can hit your focus. Don't hit the sleep, because that'll take it straight to one specific focus mode. Hit that, and then you have a list. And you can notice here, I created one called music. You can create your own focus modes, and these are actually much more handy than you would think for music production. And I'm gonna show you how I did it and how you can do it too. So you can just go into focus right here and then hit new focus and you can create a custom focus. You can select one of the ones they offer you here or you can create a custom one. I would recommend doing a custom one, especially for music production. Right now, I'm just gonna show you what I did for my music one since I already created it. So I've got it turned off right now, but I will turn it on. But basically you can allow what notifications get through and which ones don't. This is really important when you're making music. You don't wanna get distracted and get pulled away from the music you're making. And I, I turn this on now every time I make music. The people that are allowed to get through to me are my wife, 
That's it. And the only app that's allowed to get through is reminders, because if I left myself something to remind myself something at that time, I definitely wanted to get it at that time. So you can also set options here, whether you want people to be notified in their iMessage as to the fact that you are on a focus mode. Uh, and you can share that focus status or not. I currently have it set to share. This part right here is where it gets really dope, the home screens. So you can hide your notification badges, which is super helpful to me because when I sit down and I have my iPad in front of me and I see red bubbles, it just makes me want to look at whatever's in there. Hide your notification badges and then you can set custom pages. This is one of the best parts in my opinion. You can hit edit pages and all those pages I showed you are still there, but I can set it to only allow the music home screen uh, for my music production. So when I get ready to come in here and make music, the only home screen I see is my music production one and I don't see any notification badges so I'm not tempted to check my notifications. Next is lock screen. I haven't turned any of these on but it says silence notifications show on lock screen. I don't really want to see the notifications at all during that time, so I leave that off. If you want them to show up in your lock screen, then you can do that. You can dim the lock screen. I'm not sure the utility of that, unless it's for, if you're going to use this for your nightstand or something, that's probably what that's for. Um, and then name and appearance. You can set the name of it and you can set your icon, and that icon will be what pops up here when you turn it on, and I, you can choose the color. Then you can schedule it to turn on automatically. I have mine set to turn on at 11.30 because that's when my lunch break is and that's when I come in here to make music for my lunch break session. So that's what I have it set to and I have it set to automatically turn off at 1.30. I usually remember to do it myself but it's there in case I forget. And that's it. When I turn this on, boom, you'll see it pops up the icon right there that I have selected. And if I go home, now I just have the music tech page. There's nothing else here except for this page and then obviously the app library. Um, but nothing over here, it's just this page. And that's pretty clutch. So one of the dope things for me as both a musician and a video creator is that I can use these focus modes to help me just run in here plug everything up and get going because I don't have to worry about my watch going off, I don't have to worry about my phone going off, my MacBook that I'm using to record this, and the iPad. Once I turn that focus mode on on any of those devices, it sets them for all of those devices. And I can change that if I wanted to, but I don't. So that's kind of dope. I can just go in on my watch, swipe up, hit this focus here, and that turns it off. Or I can tap it, and there it is, it's in my list, music, I can tap it, and I can just turn it on or turn it on for a certain amount of time. I'll just turn it on and now it's set on the iPad, which is super dope, music on. Now, if you guys wanna know how I did some of these custom widgets and how I got this layout perfectly, great, because we're gonna recreate it right now. So what you're gonna do is go into jiggle mode. <laughs> go into jiggle mode? Um, swipe all the way over and you have a new home page. We're gonna start from scratch. The couple apps that you're going to need for this are Widget Smith and Color Widget. Those are the apps I use to get some of these icons. So this clock here is Color Widget and so is this logo one. And this one down here, the music label is Widget Smith. That's what I used for that. So cop those and then find you a blank home screen, get started. We're gonna hit plus on the widgets and you're gonna add a color widget. You can kind of arrange the sizes however you want. Here's the big one that I use is my music tech one. Press and hold, drag it on. Now, once you've done that, you probably won't have this as your default. You, you shouldn't at least. You can tap it and that's how you go into editing it. So none of these widgets can be programmed to take you to another program, uh, which I wish, that would be super dope. But you can go and create your own custom color widgets. You just hit the plus button here, create one like this one, random one here. You can edit it by just tapping it. And there's all kinds of parameters you can change in here. You can change what type of widget it is altogether. You can change the colors and you can select some of these popular ones. Or if you want to pay for the pro, I didn't, uh, but you can do that. You can also just do a straight up photo, which is what I use to make my music tech one. Once you have it set, you can set the name of it. And then once you go back to your home screen, you can press and hold, hit edit widget and then change this to whichever widget you made, and then you'll be set. So I've got mine set to widget one, that's what I want. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and press and hold, add another color widget, and this time it's going to be the clock widget, and I like this square size right here, so I'm gonna hit add widget, and I'm gonna tap it, change this to widget two, and there you go. I've customized this 
widget to my liking. Once you've got your horizontal bar, then we can start talking about the ones that go down here. So you can put any widgets you want up here. These are the two that I use. You can use several more, it's up to you. The next one I like to have, I like to have the batteries on every one of my pages so I can always see what my devices are sitting at. I can hit add widget, boom, there it is. Got that set. And then this is where we get into some of the widget smith stuff. So scroll down to widget smith here and we want a medium one this size. We're going to add it and it, it automatically picked one, but we're going to go in and change that in a second here. I would want this to go down here, but I can't until I get more stuff on here. So that's fine. We're going to go ahead and, and tap on this and you can change which widget you have to the ones that you've created. So I want this one to be music and I'm good to go. We'll tap on music to pull up widget smith. So just tap on the widget and it pulls up widget smith and you can create all kinds of widgets. So I have the four that I've created here and you can create them based on the size. I will go with the medium widgets for the labels. It's up to you though. What I did was went to one of these templates down here where you can have custom text. And then I changed the theme. Uh, I left it on basic actually, and I hit customize theme. And then you can change the font to system. I like that better than the rounded ones. You can change it to whatever their built in fonts are here. And then you can change the colors of the font. You can change the background color, the border color if you want a border. Um, but once you've set your widget the way you want, you just hit save and you go back and then you make sure you hit save again. It's kind of weird, um, but there it is. That's medium number five, and that's my widget right there. So now when you press and hold on this to hit edit widget, you can set the one you just created. Cool, once you've done that, you need to decide on eight apps or folders that you want to use to fill up your space here. I'm just gonna grab some at random, just as an example, but you can go into your app library and you can go ahead and just grab some ones that make sense to you. Boom, now that you've got your eight different apps set, you just need to drag that widget that got stuck up here, down here, and it'll let you do it now because you got all of your other apps set. Once you've got that, boom, now you've got the whole layout. Now remember, you can do folders here or just icons. I've done just icons. Now what you've got to do is get your portrait version set up. So it defaults to doing something wacky and that's okay. Basically what you need to do is correct what they've done here. So we'll go ahead and move our music label down to the bottom. And then I want this one right above the music label, just like before. And there you go, it automatically moves things over here as I want. And if I have a different order I want for these icons, I can move those around too till they're set. Once I hit done, that's locked in place. And it won't forget my portrait version, or my land landscape version rather. It'll keep it the way I had it, and then when I rotate to portrait, it will remember that too. There you go, you guys. Hopefully that helps. I highly recommend doing something like this. It's not just about aesthetics, although I believe aesthetics are really important when it comes to enjoying doing your music, which is why I spend the time to make setups like this with my desk and also with my iPad, which reminds me, if you haven't seen my desk tour video, I'll link that up here as well. Hopefully this helps bring some more productivity into your music production. If you like this video and you wanna see more content like this, definitely hit that like button. Consider subscribing to the channel. Definitely share your top tip for productivity in music production down in the comments section so everybody can benefit from your wisdom. But until next time, creatives, go make something dope and I'll see you in the next video.